Hey everyone, in this video we are going to look at different methods of meshing to perform a finite element analysis. To start off, I am going to use this simple surface model here that has no thickness and I am going to assume a particular thickness for this surface and then perform an analysis. So I go to applications and simulate and uh, before we start a quick note here would be this method that I'm going to show here is not limited to Creo simulate alone this can be used in any types of solver the logic remains the same but just the tool and the interface are different between different solvers. So let's get started. So, so I go to refine model tab and click on an option called shell. So you can think of a cylinder of a particular thickness. So I have a surface model here with me that represents the mid surface of my cylinder. So what I'm going to do is going to click on the outer surface of the cylinder. So Creo selects top and the bottom surfaces for me. So it is asking me for a particular thickness. So I'm going to assume one millimeter initially. So as you can see, there is a purple colored layer that has formed on top and bottom of my mid surface that represents my shell. So you can assume this as a thin cylinder which we are going to perform an analysis. See the reason why we are doing this is because if we just have a surface model and we are trying to mesh it, it won't work. I'll just show you how it works. So I'm going to suppress the shell definition for a moment and then go back to my model tree to assign a material. So I'm going to use a ferrous material, particularly a low carbon steel. So I've assigned materials and I go to simulate again. If I try to mesh it, it won't mesh. The reason being the model does not have a meshable geometry or idealization. So this is why we are going to use an idealization. So I go to my model tree and unsuppress my shell definition. Now if I create mesh, it will mesh my body. So we just have two elements with us two or three elements. So this is not enough to perform our analysis. So what I will be doing is go to mesh control drop down. You have something called maximum element size. So I'm going to click on components. So it selects my component. So maximum element size would be somewhere close to five millimeter. Let's check how the mesh looks. So I click on auto gem create. Yep, this looks better right now. So each element is not more than five millimeter on my model. Yeah, as you can see, although it created top and bottom layers, it is just creating a mid surface mesh that represents the geometry that just follows the profile of my geometry. So during computation, what it does is it takes the thickness of the object as a parameter and not as a geometrical entity. That's one thing to note here. So we are going to perform a simple static analysis. So for a moment, I'm going to hide the shell definition. So if you come to home tab, there is an option called displacement. So in the drop down, I choose edges and curve going to arrest these two edges in all degrees of freedom X, Y, Z in translation as well as rotation. So my edges are fixed. So I have created a point in the middle of the end, end edge. So end circular edge of the cylinder. So I'm going to apply a force on that one before I apply a force. I go to refine model tab and create a rigid link that links this center point as well as these two edges. So that if I apply a force in the middle, that point when it gets dragged along by the force, it also takes the edges with it. We can also apply forces directly on the edges, but you know, I just prefer this uh, midpoint technique that would create some kind of symmetry. You can also try it without the point directly applying forces on the edges. It will give you the same result. So now I go to home tab, pick this force option from surfaces. I select points and I pick the point on the model tree. So as per my convention, it is along the Z direction that I'm going to apply force. If you look at the bottom right corner of the screen, my Z direction is this. So my force is going to be in the negative Z direction. I will apply somewhere close to 10 kilo Newton. So there is an arrow pointing towards the direction of the force or the vector. I click OK. Now I unhide my shell definition. If you go to analysis and studies, there will be an option to start a new static analysis. I'm going to call this shell underscore one millimeter thick. OK. So I hit the green flag. 
so the analysis has run in no time so it, it has only taken about one second barely a second to complete this analysis so that's the advantage of using idealization it reduces the number of elements so that it reduces the amount of time so i'm going to close out of this and i'm going to look at the results here so for the results first i'm going to look at the displacement plot to see whether i get a sensible deformation based on the load i applied so you click on deform scaling is 5% show element edges and animate yeah perfect so this is the type of deformation that i wanted so we have fixed this edge here and we have applied a point load here that point is connected to these edges so these edges are being pulled towards the load direction we can stop this animation right now and then i'm going to copy it it stress one mesis want the maximum not deform show element edges so if you take a look at the displacement and the stress plot so the maximum displacement here is about 0.03 mm and the maximum stress is about 212 mpa so we can leave this aside for a moment and then we can go back to the other techniques of meshing and just have a comparison between those two results i'm going to exit out of this part here so i have a similar component that's made out of sheet metal definition so if you go to edit sketch option i have a circle here that has been extruded with 1 mm thickness so this time we have a defined thickness instead of a an arbitrary surface or a mid surface now we can go to simulate tab to perform the same analysis we did on the previous case to applications on simulate as you can see in the interest of time i have created constraints in advance and i also created rigid links and applied loads to save time so similarly i have a maximum element size control on the mesh so we'll just mesh it once just to see how this one looks so yeah before that i would like to point out i have a shell pair definition on this model just like how we had a shell definition so i will delete this shell pair and show you how it works from the scratch go to refine model tab click on shell pair select any surface top or bottom surface either one works the same way so it picked surfaces automatically for me turn okay now if you go to review geometry click on apply it will show me the mid surface in green that has been created between the top membrane and the bottom membrane with a particular thickness so i close out of here so since i have all my constraints set what i am going to do is go to go to home tab analysis have a static analysis set already same as the previous one so i'm going to run it so it has run pretty quickly like the last time so to view the results i'm going to go to results tab again first the displacement deformed so the displacement looks good i'm going to stop the animation copy this stress plot maximum to one deformed so now we have our results for a defined thickness model we can stack the surface model and the model with the defined thickness side by side right now so for that what we're going to do is going to open pick the shell with 1 mm thick analysis first the displacement deformed same settings not going to animate it this time then open again or you can just click on the third window and copy it change the quantity to stress i want don't want it deformed just the element edges so this time we have to choose maximum to match with the one on the top so they both show the maximum stresses on the top as well as the bottom membrane so as you can see the stresses are very similar to each other on these two types of meshing conditions so they produce similar meshes but the initial conditions from which they started were different actually these two analysis were inverse of each other if you look at the displacement they have similar displacement 0.039 and 0.037 then on the stress stress we have 224 as max and 212 as max in this one so they look very close to each other so these are two different ways we can 
you know idealize a solid mesh into a shell or a shell pair but it depends on what kind of initial conditions you are uh, starting with so let me show you an example of where can we use shell and where can we use shell pair for that i have a presentation with me so maximizing the screen so we have a difference between shell approach and shell pair approach so you can use shell approach if you have a complex geometry you have complex profiles and you want to you know idealize it using a particular thickness or you want to run a sensitivity study to uh, you know compute uh, what is the stress for different thickness you can use this one mostly used for surface models the shell pair approach is you have a defined thickness but you want to reduce your computation time to save on creating solid elements so instead of that you go for shell approach it, it is used for you know welded structures or uh, you know predominantly in pressure vessels as it is a you know as they have defined thickness on their walls and it is a thin wall structure so these are some of the scenarios where we can use shell and shell pairs to go further i am going to explain why we are idealizing as such why we why can't we go with solid elements first thing would be to reduce the computational efforts because if we have elements created on the other dimension instead of x and y alone we'll have more elements and more computational effort is needed so if you look at the screen we have a plane element here which is subjected to a force on these two edges so the natural mode of failure would be to split in half so these two separate into uh symmetrical pieces like this under ideal condition and if we apply forces on the other two edges it's going to split like this but there is never going to be a scenario in a thin walled structure where if the forces are like this and it is going to split into two equal halves in a planar manner there is never going to be a failure mode on a sheet metal say with 2 mm thickness so it splits into two equal halves with one mm thickness there is never going to be a situation so this is the reason why we are assuming stress is you know uh, zero along the z direction and that is why we are ignoring to create elements that's why we are creating the shell approach that gives us a mid surface mesh or a top surface or bottom surface whatever we choose to uh, opt in our definitions window so this is just a background and now it is time to compare the idealized technique that we saw here and stack it up against our solid techniques so we can see how this actual solid mesh behaves compared to this one so in order to save some time for us during comparison i'll save this results definition window in my session so i'm going to call this shell versus shell pair so that it saves us some time when we compare this with solid going to exit out of creo not creo but creo simulate then now i go to a body that i have which is very close to the previous one but this time it is not created out of any thickness definition but but the actual solid model itself it's not a surface model it's not a sheet metal but a solid model with a particular thickness going to go to applications and simulate so i have my constraints set already like the previous ones but the only difference is i do not have any idealization on my model model tree it's just a solid mesh so go to auto gem create it gives me a good solid mesh so it has elements in all three directions x y z not only in planar direction go to home tab analysis so i call this analysis solid 1 mm thick similar definitions here click on run so now you can see the amount of time it is taking the previous analysis it took only 1 second to run it so now it has taken almost 6 seconds so you just magnify or scale this analysis to a an assembly where it has more than 100 components so the amount of computation increases by 6 folds roughly so that is the reason why we are idealizing now it's time to stack up against our uh, idealized results so we go to results tab First, I want to see the displacement. T form five percent. Animate show element edges. So we have similar deformation in our solid mesh approach as well. And if you look at the actual value, it is very close to our shell mesh, which we'll be comparing shortly. So I'll stop the animation. Copy this window. Want to see stress? this time we are not getting a prompt to choose maximum top or bottom because it's a solid model not a shell model 
I want it to be deformed. And click on OK. Now I click open and choose my previously saved results definition. So the first two windows, they actually represent our solid body. So if you look at the displacement between all the techniques we used, all the three techniques. So the first one would be 0 0.031 on the solid and then 0 0.039 and then 0 0.037. So they are very close to each other in terms of actual magnitude. We look at the stresses, the shell approach and the shell pair approach actually gave us barely a difference, a difference between 224 and 220, 212. So it is roughly around 5% and then a difference between 224 and 254 that comes out to be roughly around 13, 14%. So that's the kind of uh, difference we are getting and the approach on the shell pair approach. So I guess uh, you would have got a fair idea on how the different kinds of meshing techniques stack up against each other in terms of, you know, accuracy and, uh, you know, actual percentage errors or percentage difference between each other. If you have any questions, I hope you would definitely have. Please uh, post them in the comments box. I know I haven't covered it 100%, but uh, this video will get really long and uh, we would have to sit together for an entire day to discuss about these techniques in detail. So so this is just an introductory video to, to use different types of meshing based on your given condition. So yeah, I hope you would have liked this video and uh, don't forget to drop your uh, likes and don't forget to drop your comments on the comment section. We'll see you on the next video.